Dime Dropper fam, what is up? I got a special treat for you guys tonight. I was invited by one of my players, one of my sixth grade team's players' dads to go to the Laker game tonight against the Milwaukee Bucks. You know what that means? First ever Dime Dropper Laker vlog. I haven't been to a Laker game since the 2017-18 season, and it was Lonzo versus De'Aaron as rookies. Pretty fun, but I've never gone to a game in the LeBron era because the tickets have been so expensive. So tonight we'll be going, but no LeBron with the ankle injury, which sucks because I'd never seen LeBron play a home game before. I wanted to see how the Laker fans have embraced him after all these years, you know, relative to, of course, Kobe. And I'm, I'm guessing it's obviously not the worship of Kobe, but, you know, LeBron's fans, now he's, you know, a, a Laker legend in the sense that he did win a ring and he has ushered in this new era of success, relative success for the Lakers organization. But I wanted to see how he did, or how he looked, you know, in front of the Laker fans. But instead, we're going to be getting at least AD, and this is the most important thing. I have seen every NBA team play except for one, the Milwaukee Bucks. And tonight I will be completing the final step of the process to have watched every NBA team play live. And here's the funniest part. I'm going to the Clipper game tomorrow against the Bulls less than 16 hours after the game ends. And then I'm going to the Clipper game the next day against the Bucks. So I'm going to be at Staples Center three days in a row. I've been to Staples Center back-to-back -back days, even a Clipper game one night and a Laker game the other, but never three nights in a row. So this is going to be crazy on this channel. And I'm still contemplating if I want to release this video individually or do a little Clipper game one night, Laker game one night kind of video and just show the contrast because I did that before I had a YouTube channel. So let's go. I can't wait to see Giannis. I've seen basically every superstar you could think of from the 2000s onward, except for two, Giannis and Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett will stand alone after tonight. Now, last bit of business. What am I going to wear? You know, I have three throwback Laker jerseys. My Kobe one doesn't fit me, but three besides that, that I never wear really because, you know, I'm a Clipper fan. But I have it for, you know, I'm an L.A. sports fan. I love Laker history. Kareem, Magic, and Eddie Jones. It's, I, I, this is the best time to wear one, right? I just can't be seen in a picture with one because anyone's going to make fun of me. Clipper fan wearing a Laker jersey. What are you doing? I don't care that much. It's not a real rivalry to me until we meet in the playoffs. So until then, and you know my rule, only throwbacks for other teams. I don't buy anyone's jersey um, if it's a current player, unless it's a Clipper. Only throwbacks. I think I'm gonna go with Eddie Jones though. It's too, it's too, it's too rare to not show off. So this is my Eddie Jones jersey that was given to me by my uncle straight from the 90s. You know, you can't find these anywhere. And if you're wondering, 25, I thought Eddie Jones was number six. Well, this was before Gail Goodrich's number was retired. So it was still 25. So they don't make these anymore. You could probably only find them on eBay from somebody who bought them back then. It's so unbelievably rare. So I got a rocket. I mean, come on. That shit is hard. Eddie Jones. I think I'm going to go with it. So one thing they do, the Lakers, they don't do for us is the covering on the pillars here. Gave us a program and a little notebook. It's a little giveaway stuff in the Lakers. The Buck, Damian Lillard. First time seeing you in the Bucks uniform. So a couple things about Laker games, they black out the crowd higher than we do. It's like the contrast with the court. And the banners obviously we cover. The jerseys used to actually be over there. That's where the jerseys used to be. They moved them to over there. George Mikan's jersey is finally there. That's my first time seeing it. And they're all in order of retirement now. Baylor, Will, Jerry, Gale, Silk, Kareem, Magic, James, Jack, Sue Beans, and now Powell. It's my first time seeing Powell's too. Oh, yeah. Legend. Legend. And these Minnesota banners are new. And there's a polar bear in the Sahara over here. Get out of here. The great Dave Cash. Monitor. The great Marcus Johnson over there. This is awesome. B score prediction? Uh, I got 111-104. All right, there we go. AD big night. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Tanner, the home, the home team, Just 
got to meet Lawrence Tanner. Said how much I appreciated him. He was very touched, it seemed. What a legend. And also got to meet Billy Mack and Stu Lance. A lifelong dream of mine to meet Stu Lance. I asked him, did Elvin Hayes pass? He said, not a lot, but he did sometimes. <laughs> we are in the gold seats. The new addition to Staples Center. It's empty a lot of times.
entertainment for Laker games. And that's one thing the Clippers are really good at is the entertainment during timeouts. Interactive. At the Laker girls right now though. <laughs>
fourth personal for your team foul. Great time. This is awesome. 
Time dropper fam, top of the morning. What an experience that was last night. Amazing game, solid atmosphere. And I got to meet so many of my, you know, people I've looked up to since I was a kid. Lawrence Tanner, Stu Lance, even Billy Mack, AC Green. That was so cool. So, so cool. Um, as far as the Laker crowd is concerned, because I know that's going to be something that people are going to ask me about. I thought it was pretty good, but it was a lot quieter than I thought it was going to be the first couple of quarters, given how marquee the matchup it was. Of course, no LeBron, but it was a close game the whole way. And here's what I'd say. Like, it's louder than a Clipper game, but not as loud as I thought it would be from what it's been sounding like on TV a couple of years, the last couple of years. Now, you might be wondering, haven't you been to a Laker game before? Yes, but the last couple of years, it sounded louder because, like, the Lakers are good again after being bad. So, like, the fans have been not taking it for granted as much. But it got loud in the fourth quarter. But for the most part, the defense, there was not real defense chance to, like, midway through the third. As far as reactions to things that were happening on the court, they were obviously a little bit louder than Clippers because there's just genuinely more true fans of the Lakers at their games than the Clippers at their games because... In regular season Clipper games, you get a lot of just random people that want to go see a basketball game and that kind of thing. Whereas Laker tickets are so expensive. Some fans, you know, that's, they can only go to one game a year. So they're going to be loud when they're there. So Laker games are a little bit louder, but not as crazy loud, much louder as I as I thought it would be. Um, the one thing I'll say about Stable Center is it's just not great for sound. Like, even when it was loud at the end, when it, everybody was yelling defense last two minutes... The sound just travels. The arena is not built for basketball. So that's one thing I'm really excited about with the Intuit Dome is I want it to have like a TD Garden, MSG kind of feel where the fans are right on top of you and it's not three levels of suites and the sound's traveling everywhere. So great experience. Now you're about to see what it's like to be at a Clipper game. Now, of course, my followers and my vlog, uh, fans obviously know that, but directly in the same videos after a Laker game, it should be a cool thing to see. So Clippers, Bulls, this is going to be – I saw the Bulls two years ago on this channel when they were – off to an amazing start to their season. That was Lonzo, DeRozan, Caruso, Levine. And there was 50 to 60% Bulls fans. It was not. They took over the stadium. I hope it's not like that tonight or today. So back at it. Less than 16 hours since the game ended last night. Staples Center staff, the best in the business. Enjoy this while it lasts because this is the last we're going to be able to do this. You know, one night Clipper game, one night Laker game thing. It's a very unique experience. And part of the reason I love Staples Center so much but, of course, all good things must come to an end. Clippers back home. Harden, Kawhi, and Paul are activated. Let's get this win over the Bulls. Got to get it done. So the game has already started, and we can't access our tickets. Our app's tripping, but apparently it's not just for us. Look at this. The game has already started, and there's this many people in the box office. How you feeling, Cheesy? This is ridiculous. We're in the building, but it's already into the first quarter. We're back again. So you guys remember how yesterday those pillars were covered? They're not for Clipper game.
have there. What yeah. are your thoughts? We need to step it up. Our uh, scoring and defense needs to step up overall right now. We're not doing the best. I hate the rest right now. Yeah. It's good rest. The Bulls fans, how many do you think there are? Like percentage wise? Oh, there's a good amount today. Uh, say 20%? 20, 23% right now? Or okay. Yeah, I, I like, like there's a good amount. All including right. these two, right here. Your dad wants for picture. Yeah. Clippers gonna win? Yeah. All right, Spence. Frustrating yes. first half. Give me the scoop because I actually came late. I was gonna here for the first quarter. What you got? Scoop is lack of defense. Our interior defense is atrocious. We have to get back down to the basics. I think one of the issues is we're taking it for granted at our seed. Let's just be honest. Um, I feel like second half, we have to be coming out with a lot of effort. We got to come out with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, one of the issues is how much do we want it? Yeah, what do you think with these early starts? Because we never get off to good starts in these early games. I, I think personally, yes, our schedule is what it is. But at the same time, no excuses. Either you want the title or you don't want the title. This is crunch time. What do you think the percentage of Bulls fans in the arena are today? Uh, it's a few, you know, a couple Bulls fans, you know, Over Chicago here. 50-50 or less than 50-50? Uh, I think it's 40-50. Uh, 40-60. 40-60. And who's 60, us? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Are we going to come back and win this? I, I predict we're going to make a late run, end of the third, into the fourth. Close game at the end or convincing? I, I think it's going to be a convincing run that we're going to do. I say we win it by about eight points. Here come the Clippers.
outside Staples Center where the Clippers have come from behind to get a win against the Bulls. Wasn't pretty when we got it done. DL2, how are you feeling? Uh, pretty good. Um, it's like you said, it wasn't pretty, but a dub is a dub. The second half was pretty, honestly. Um, but for the most part, just a lot of guys fatigued, stepped up, did what they had to do, and that was get the dub. You know? What was the difference in that second half, you think, that turned it around for us? We outscored them by like 22 in the second half. I, I, I really don't know. Um, it, it just seems like they pick up their pace a little bit. Um, they realize kind of what's going on. They just get their second win in the second half. That it, it's in the name. Second win, second half, it just is what it is. It was their second chance. Um, and it just seemed like, you know, they woke up. It just is what it is. I don't want to blame it on this. Uh, but we talk about the afternoon game curse uh, with this team specifically. Someone made a tweet earlier um, that, that said, you know, we can't blame it on that because the other team is playing the game too. Um, but it seems like the Clippers just get lazy sometimes. It's a mental thing, and we just woke up in the second half, and I'm, I'm glad we did. Player of the game? Paul George. i, I got to give it to Paul George. Yeah. Will you be back here tomorrow against Milwaukee? I will. It's the third game in three days. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, you and I, three games in a row yeah, at Stable yeah, Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pr pretty much, oh, Jesus Christ. That guy didn't give a fuck. That guy didn't give Dude, a fuck. Dude, who the hell is this guy? Fuck your Iowa Sumo jersey, buddy. Excuse us. Yeah, excuse us. Uh, anyway. I'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we can get revenge against the Milwaukee Bucks. Appreciate you, bro. Outside Staples Center where the Clippers have just gotten a narrow win over the Chicago Bulls. Rough first half, Mason, but we turn it around. I mean, that's what the Clippers do at this point. We are a second half team through and through. Like every single loss we've had, bad second half. Like that's the way. The second half is where this team makes its money. At this point, I'm not, I barely pay attention to the first half anyway because I'm like, yeah, we're just going to win anyway. And we do, usually. Can we get away with this against good teams, though? We did it against Houston last game and now Chicago today. But against good teams, is it going to work? Well, we're going to find out tomorrow. Will you be here? Yes. Who was player of the game today? Um, honestly, uh, Zoo's good. Uh, triple, double for James Harden. Shout-outs to him. Like, yeah, Zoo and James, that's who I'd give it to. All right, appreciate you. See you tomorrow, Mason? Yep. Thank Bye you, bro. Always. Right. Outside Staples Center where the Clippers have just come from behind in a complete second half turnaround to beat the Bulls. Jonathan, how are we feeling about that one? It, to be honest, the Clippers weren't even playing all that bad in the first half. Like, the defense was fine. Debo was just cooking. Amir cooking Norm, cooking even Kawhi. I, 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 talked, I tweeted to, like, Clippers podcast with uh, Chuck, Adam, and uh, Will. Like, just put PG on Debo, we'll shut him down. That's what we ended up doing. PG shut Debo down in the second half, and that's that's what happened. What do you think about our offense? It was a little stagnant though in the first half. I mean, we 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 had good looks. We were just missing shots. So like, I have no really complaints about the offense. Like PG, PG had some had some mishaps, but he wasn't as bad this game compared to last game. Overall, like, I can't really fault the effort too much. How you feeling about Milwaukee tomorrow? You think we can get away with uh, Taylor two half scenario? Or do you think we need to put it together for four quarters against them? They, they got to play full 48 minutes. I think they might have tired legs because the weird 22-hour turnaround, but they, they, they got to – it's a big game. They got to be pissed from losing without Giannis and uh, Middleton last game, so they got to go for it. Final two questions. One, is the one seed still in play? And two, player of the game today? One seed is, is looking tough because Denver's turning it on. They're, they're taking it seriously now. It's a stretch run. OKC's – I can't see them falling, but we can – one seed is out of the out of the picture, but we can take the three seed or maybe the two seed. Player of the game? Player, I can't really go player of the game, but I got players like I I'll, I'll go I'll go different way. Busy bones. All right, I like it. It made a good impact today. Appreciate you, Jonathan. Right. Thanks, Doug. No problem. Outside Staples Center, where the Clippers have just come from behind to beat the Chicago Bulls, felt a lot like the game the other day against the Rockets. Uh, it's very lethargic first half. Of course, you know, the early start. I thought defensively we weren't actually that bad, but I only caught the second quarter. I was late for the game because of the ticket mishap, so I couldn't catch the first quarter. But from what I've heard, DeRozan was going off. But we tightened up in the second half. Paul George had a bunch of steals, and he really just started getting more aggressive. I thought we were super stagnant in the first half, not moving the ball with any zip or pop. Just dribble, 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 pass, and it was just very slow. Thankfully, we started tightening it up defensively and then started to get some easy baskets in the second half. And shots also just started falling, and they finally started missing shots. You know, a lot of the shots they missed second half, they're making the first half. So kind of just a tale of two halves, but 
it's a lot of it's our effort, I think, and just the intensity that we come out with. We can't get away with this against good teams. We gotta be good for four quarters. Milwaukee is gonna be tough. They just came off a rough one against the Lakers. And I'm not trying to lose to Glenn Rivers. Not at all. So we gotta get it done. We gotta be better tomorrow. Shout out James Harden. Did get a triple double and made some big shots down the stretch and some big passes. I thought Zubats looked really rough for a large stretch of the game and then he kind of turned it around late. And then Paul George, I mean, it really just comes down to sometimes he forgets how to play basketball. You know, Kawhi was getting doubled in the post today when he had smaller defenders on him. And we need other guys to make up for that or to punish defenses. And Paul George in the second half, he got way more aggressive on both ends of the floor and it made the difference. And I also want to give a shout out to Norman Powell and Bones Highland, giving us that offensive boost off the bench. Lastly, I want to say, you know, Chicago Bulls, two years ago when I came to the game, they had about 55 to 60% of their stadium was Bulls fans. Today, I want to say it was about 40 at most. So better scene, better win, good time. We're back tomorrow for our third straight game. Everybody, let me know what you thought of the video. Two game experiences, Lakers and Clippers in one video. Let me know what you think and all the differences you saw. Peace, go Clippers, we're back tomorrow.